It's still loading, it's still loading. Yes, now I can I see it. Yes, I can see it. Now. Hello? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm open my what's the graphic tablet here you are a pen billion oh send me ten pictures wow yes great Yeah, wait a second. I'm opening my graphic tablet. Give me a second. Yeah, you send me this paper. Huh? Yes, yes, that. Let me see that is it. Oh, what's happening? How about you just go to paint for this one? Actually, your pictures are here. That's why that. So here I can. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm opening that one. Yes. Okay. So determining relative molecular mass of diatomic molecule. Okay. So, relative, okay, so, what do you want to study over here? Uh, I want to understand how to beta. find relative atomic mass of diatomic uh, molecules. Actually, Meaning, if I'm given something charge to ratio, but like charge with per ratio, like MS to carb to trial, that you can find the relative molecular mass. Yes, so there are different uh, different uh, components. Like for example, 35, 35, 37, 37, 35, 37, or 37, 35, and we have to find it somehow like that. This one is uh, this one is a uh, little uh, little. Uh, yes, it's a little uh, interesting. I'll say. But a relative molecular mass. Suppose that uh, means. Uh, uh, mm, Relative molecular mass. Wait, 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 wait. I think that uh, there are many definitions. So, so let me think that uh, which will be much easier for you to understand that. Give me one second. Mm. Relative molecular mass. Okay. Actually, that with respect to, and normally we know that uh, relative molecular mass is defined as the mass ratio of substance to the one twelfth of the mass of atom of carbon twelve, you know. Yes, but they're not using carbon twelve to calculate this. What they're using is the ratios of different chlorine isotopes, like three is to one and something something, and they're calculating it using this idea. I can't understand it though, but I'm sure that they are not using carbon. Though. Wait, there are two peaks correspond corresponding to isotopic masses of thirty five and thirty seven. Okay, that's a chlorine mass because chlorine has two isotopes and uh, the approximate relative peak 
heights for each isotope are 3 to 1. For chlorine to chlorine 37, the given this gives an approximate relative atomic mass to this sample of chlorine. Okay. Okay, so if the ratio is 3 is to 1, so 3 into 35 plus 1 into 37 divided by 4. Oh, it's also a type of new thing to me also. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is in my GCS, GCE uh, A-levels, this chapter. I'll notice in the diagram of the three peaks corresponding to the molecular mass of uh, 70, 72, 74. So ratio, okay, in which diagram they are talking about, give me a second. 74, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, Yes. Formula of the molecule. You will notice in the diagram that there are peak corresponding to the molecule masses of 70, 72, 74. How can we explain the relative height of these peaks? Okay, relative height 70, 72, 74. So, relative height uh, and yes, that is on x axis. That is your okay, 70. 72-74 but what is with respect to um, y-axis there is not a given any type of height y-axis is, y is the abundance so for example uh, isotope of chlorine is far more abundant than chlorine 75 something like that so if you divide it by 2 you have 35 and 37 two kinds of isotopes I should skip this image for now. There's another image I like, like to discuss with you, which I think is more important. Because these things are not that important, I guess. We can discuss this later. But there's one thing I really think is important with you. I think, oh, no, 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 not this image. The next image I like. But I opened the next image. Oh, uh, the next image, next to this. This one? Oh, no, that's the questions for this exercise. The next image, next image. This one? Yes, quantum, quantum shells. Shell? This one. Quantum shells and orbitals. Pauli exclusion principle, Alfbar's law, and all of this. S orbitals, P orbitals. I can't understand. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's, <laughs> that's the common thing. Okay. Quantum, quantum shells, I can't. Quantum shells, that is uh, easy to understand that. Okay. There are four types of quantum shells S, P, D, F. S, P, D, F. Okay. Yes. S, P, D, F. And there are four types of, regarding to quantum mechanism, actually quantum mechanism is the branch of science which enable us to distribute the energy in different levels. Okay? Max Planck was the first scientist who explained about quantum theory, okay, which is generally used to describe which is generally used to describe the distribution of energy in different cells okay with respect to nucleus you can also understand hello yes i can hear you can hear oh you. you can also understand this one that distribution of energy or distribution of electrons you can also understand that because okay. that electrons are energy carrier so don't be confused about that okay and uh, okay. secondly all the all the atoms are all, all the new according to uh, whatever that uh, uh, Max Planck that gave that according to that theory that electron can only exist in a certain well-defined energy level okay okay all right that is known as quantum shell okay you can okay. also understand the quantum cell just like as they are the type of cells having constant energy level okay okay constant energy level right? yeah why I'm saying constant energy level because okay indirectly that 
their level is not constant okay but the energy of the label that is constant you can also understand in this way suppose that if there is uh, any atom there will be nucleus there okay and also okay. surrounding and in this there will be a neutron okay which are also known as nucleons and around okay. to that there is an imaginary path okay Oh, that's called which a is, shell, right? That's what. Yeah, which is known as orbit. Okay. Okay. Which is orbit. All the orbits that contains electrons. Okay. Can you draw this for me? Can you draw this one for me? I think it will be easier to understand. Yes. Why not? I can draw it to you. Give me a second. Oh. Okay, in handmade that I can draw it for you or uh, you, do you think that I have to uh, open in paint or uh, I think I, it's better if you open this image in paint. No, no, not of image. Okay, no need to open that on paint. Okay, only just whatever that I want to draw because that if I will draw here then I, I, in handmade that each and everything will be on paint there is predefined shapes. Oh, you that. can just do it handmade if it's not uh, that yeah. difficult. Then I think that's what I was asking to you. Okay. Yeah, this is good enough. So sure. you can see that at the center is your atom. Suppose that any element that you can take our atom, suppose that uh, uh, sodium, carbon, any else that you can take that. Okay, it's your okay. nucleus. Yes. In, in nucleus, there will becomes always proton and neutron. Okay. Okay. Electrons and there becomes a predefined orbit. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, we studied about, about this in, yes. or in uh, earlier levels. Yes. Uh, always remember that these are your orbit. Okay. Orbits. Okay. Yeah, and. In 1882, there was a scientist Niels Bohr, okay? Niels who, Bohr, okay. Yeah, who explained about Bohr atomic model. Uh -huh, okay. Atomic model. Bohr atomic model. So, that means proton and neutron that will be at the center, which is also known as the nucleus. And these proton and neutrons are known as nucleons. Nucleons, okay. Yes. And electrons used to revolve around the nucleus. Yes, okay. Okay? In this way, yeah. Also, there are objects named as with respect to any element, all elements, with respect to any uh, atom. Okay. There are orbits known as KLMN. KLMN, okay. Yeah, the first one is your nucleus. First one is your K. Okay, Second is this the L. SPDF? Is no, this no, the SPDF? no, 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 no. It's a K, it's a L, it's a M, M, and then okay. the next one that will be your N, okay? N, okay. All the, the number of electron number of electrons electrons in any orbit wait a second give me a second please any orbit that can be defined as formula 2 and square okay okay yeah Suppose that if you are, if you want to find out the number of electrons in the first orbit, so that is at equals to one, so there will be two. For second, it will be at eight. equals to two, there will be eight. And then three, there will be nine, eighteen. Eighteen. So two, eight, eighteen, means like two, eight, eighteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, like that, okay? Oh, so this is electronic configuration, right? Yeah, it is just like as, okay? 
as usual mm-hmm. you know that also that regarding to mendeleev periodic table each and every element has beta because that i am explaining that your quantum mechanism or quantum cell so that's why that i am explaining all that uh, means fundamental things okay which okay. you would like to use here so okay to 8 1834 according to periodic table um mandelief explain that each and every element in the periodic table that have the type of characteristic just to attain the stable electronic configuration to its nearest noble gas by losing gaining or sharing electrons okay oh okay 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 i just said this one yeah so you can also understand this one uh, do you think that i have to explain that electropositive electronegative no we have i've already studied that I've yeah already, already so that's studied. great so that means now with respect to every orbit okay there okay. are orbit okay so orbit, okay. with respect to every shell there are correspondingly four sub cells okay so the orbit is called a shell and inside the orbit there's a sub shell yeah okay. yes 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 means suppose that there's a means uh, you can um, understand that um, our solar system in our solar, solar system, system many okay. planets are there okay solar okay. system combination of planet and in our planet there are many other planets okay also you can understand in this way suppose that our earth okay and okay. also in our solar system there are also just like as earth like planet okay like kepler b kepler b2 okay okay or other which are just like as earth okay so okay. here that <laughs> but we are not discussing that one so simply that quantum cell beta with respect to every cell there are four type of quantum cell as i explained that to you that cells are the energy uh, means cells in which one there becomes electron that's why that you can understand that uh, label of energy that will be different with respect to different orbit okay so can and, i say that a quantum shell is a orbit in which the amount of electron where where there, where there are electrons and that energy remains constant throughout that particular yes, shell yes 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 and yes. different shells have different amounts of energy and yes, yes. different You're electrons right. and so on different so. shells have different amount of energy with respect to number of electrons carrying it okay okay carrying in it okay. so here most important thing is that 8 2 8 1832 that is your orbit okay in okay. their orbit that there are four types of sub shells okay each orbit that also is known as shell k l m n and that correspondingly have that sub shells like s p d f okay oh so s p d f are sub shells yeah subjects that means you to understand that according to pauli's exclusive principle okay all, all the electrons are all yeah with with respect to any atom electrons are are distributed in different energy levels okay okay or until or unless the previous until or unless the previous uh, space will not be filled it is not possible to fill the next next one okay you oh, can okay. also understand that uh, if suppose that there are there are three or four cups there okay so if you want to uh, pour tea in that one okay if you want to place tea in that one so that means first you will pour t in first one and then you will pour in second one okay? okay is it possible that you will pour in first one and then fourth one no no so they are all dependent upon each other yeah that's the thing. so that means here that quantum mechanics always work with the help of distribution of energy okay in sequel okay, okay. or one by one okay okay yes there are 
five types of four types of subcells and regarding to that there are five types of energy labels over there okay okay i think that regarding to energy label that you are not uh, you will not be study or uh, do, do, do you remember a little bit about or your teacher would like to um, uh, told you about uh, like something lyman Lyman, Balmer. Yeah, yeah, Lyman and Balmer. We talked about the electron Lyman, Pion. Yeah, we we learned about Bracket. these two guys. But but I want to first understand what is it and, says here. There's hmm. only one subshell in the first quantum shell. This is labeled as one S. So I want to understand which is one S, which is two oh, S, which is four okay, P, and all of those Hold on, wait a second. Yeah, I'm going to explain you. Please. <laughs> this way just see that okay no no me miss me suppose that energy level and all that if i am explaining so that's why that you are energy level fundamental that is totally based in this one in your book that you will study up to bracket but you will not study i think so that about phone okay or phone no we haven't talked about bracket we've only talked about lyman and uh, La Bar lyman and Balmer. Okay. Yeah, we've only talked but, about these two scientists. But Vita, so as usual, you are studying with me, so it's my duty to explain you all the type of energy levels. So, so in up to nine percent of books so that they generally describe about Lyman, Balmer, Parshan, and Bracket. But I also studied about the fund also. Okay, that's the topmost energy level. Okay, actually, okay. distribution of energy. That where comes this concept? Okay, actually, the distribution of energy. Uh, concept that came from uh, um, Thomson atomic model, okay? Oh, you mean JJ Thomson? Yeah, JJ oh. Thomson, Thomson, same thing. Okay. Yeah, J J Thomson. Why? Actually, Thomson, when explain his uh, atomic model. Then he explained that all the electrons in an atom, they are just like as to give a stability to the atom. Okay. Okay. They are just like as uh, means uh, pudding. Okay. Or they are just like as seeds in watermelon. Okay. Okay. So, do you think about that? Um, um, do you ever eat watermelon? Not really. I don't like it. <laughs> oh my god. Do you know about watermelon or not? Yes, yes. I know about okay. it. I just don't like yeah. eating it. That's oh, oh okay, 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 okay. No problem. So, watermelon, that means always remember that watermelon a little bit part that I'm, I'm, I'm explaining that. Give me, hold on. One second. One second that you'll understand that very clearly. Suppose that it becomes a light type of watermelon of outer covering and a little bit there becomes a red one red 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 red, red. yes the ring part that will be red here okay which we generally use to eat and, and then a bit about is the seeds between here okay yes that's right <laughs> okay so if yes. just imagine that if seeds would like to come out then a hundred percent just means for your kind of information you know that watermelon in watermelon there becomes 85 percent water okay water yeah and so that means if there is 85 percent water so what make it solid in state okay that is the seeds which it contains because seeds give them stability okay okay yeah so in the same way in the same way if there is energy so that means just for energy if there is energy so there are also electrons okay yes if yes there are electrons so 100 percent that if there will be not a type of balance in distribution of electrons so it is not possible okay to stable an atom okay all right so regarding to that one then uh, Bohr atomic model was there okay and the Bohr was after Bohr okay Bohr explained about the atomic model 
okay and uh, max planck also explain about the energy level and most important fact is that each and every scientist was totally acknowledged by the theory explained by um einstein okay okay because jj thompson was not able to explain actually science world ask him a question you are saying that at the center okay that you are saying that at the center okay uh, at the center there becomes a dense okay because at that time in uh, in the in the time of thomson okay there was no discovery of proton neutron or proton or neutron okay thomson okay. was the first person who invented electron okay so okay. so thomson explained that there is a dense mass center dense mass okay dense mass. The electron used to revolve around that. Okay. okay. Electron used to revolve around there. Okay. Electron. Electron. So that's main thing is that science word or other scientists ask to them. Suppose that if there is an electron, it contains an okay? so Yes. In way the with the duration of time. It activates its energy, 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 and one time when that while opting a spiral path, it will collide into a nucleus or center, center part. Okay. But most important thing is that it doesn't have like that. Why? Okay. Then Thompson was not able to explain 